I've been a financial advisor for 25 years. Our firm manages over $300 million for families here in Southern California and across the US. We've helped our clients retire, live well once in retirement, buy homes, pass on inheritances. I'm going to compress 25 years of brutally honest retirement advice into nine minutes. To be honest, most people don't wanna hear it because they think they have a shortcut. This is the stuff that's more important than Roth conversions and income withdrawal strategies. But if you're up for it, here goes. We can start by learning from my mechanic. I've gone to him for over 20 years because he knows what he's doing and he's a stand-up guy. He shows me the parts and he gives me options around saving money. When I started going to him, my wife and I each had a car and now my kids are driving. So we bring him a lot of business, sometimes more than I would like. But he does good work and we need well-running cars. Here's how this applies in retirement. Harvard researchers began a study in 1938 to find out what makes people happy in life. As that group of people got older, a major challenge emerged that no one seems to talk about. What the researchers learned is retirees don't miss working, they miss the people. But the people that fared well found ways to connect with others and that helped cultivate meaning and purpose. What I've learned is to always do the right thing for people. Long-term success hinges on this. And that applies if you're running a business, working for a company, or you're already retired. Success follows those who do right by others. In fact, everyone wins when you strive to do the right thing. More on that a little later. But even in retirement, having people around you and treating them right is good for your retirement success. See, in retirement, no one should expect to run completely self-sufficient and expect to be successful because you need others and they need you. Others need what you have to offer. And that's hopefully the joyful part of retirement is to be freed up from a vocation to make an even bigger impact in the lives of others. See, many of our clients at our firm have been with us for many years, some back for decades when they originally worked with one of my since retired colleagues. They stay with us, I believe, for the same reasons, because we have their best interests at heart. See, people can fake that for a little while, but ultimately the truth prevails. It's a simple criteria. Success follows for those who do right by others. That brings us to number two. Can you recall a time when everything in life was lined up perfectly? It's unusual that our personal and work lives and even the world around us all seem to click. And if those times come, it's often followed by a major challenge or bad news, or at the very least, uncertainty. This may sound like I'm suggesting that you be cynical. It's actually the opposite. Optimism wins out over time. Where people fail to get ahead is by hesitating for too long. They're in the search for certainty, which is a rare occurrence. I, actually, I would say that certainty never comes in all aspects of life or even your financial life. Times are always uncertain. And the news is the worst indicator for financial decision-making because the media preys on your craving for certainty. It's like dangling a carrot out in front that you'll never catch. Let me show you. You can see all these major newsworthy events on the chart. There's a constant flow that deters people from investing and making their money grow. The investment markets though have long rewarded discipline, not emotion or who's listened to more news and figured out the key to the markets. In hindsight, those events may look minor, but they were big at the time. And the next event will look minor in the rear view mirror. So we must realize these lessons from history. The flow of bad news and uncertainty are constant. The investment markets have both fluctuated in the short term and gone up in the long term. The expectation would be for these things to remain true. They are principles. And waiting for certainty or waiting for what seems like the right and comfortable time means you're already behind. For example, in the 2006-07 timeframe, people felt wealthy from real estate and stock values. People felt good. And then suddenly the stock market crashed in 2008. In 2017, you may not remember that as a historical year for the stock market, but we were supposedly on the brink of war with North Korea. And we might expect that to shatter the stock market. But the reason 2017 is not remembered is because the stock market had one of, if not the greatest combinations of growth without the downside fluctuation in market history. And some people missed it. People that wanted to retire well sat it out because of what might happen. Is it worth trying to guess? If you're waiting for certainty from the news, it's likely you'll never find that perfect moment. 
Instead, follow the principles that have always worked. But let me know your investing philosophy in the comments. Okay, number three, I've seen so many different financial situations. Of course, there are similarities from one person to the next, but what I learned from one person helps with another. That's experience. I mean, your doctor gains experience from another patient that can then help you, and you have experience in your field. And I learn something new every day. I pursue learning new things and aim to get better. I'm confident I'll learn something new tomorrow that I don't know today. And when we have that mindset, it reveals something important. Jesus said, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And this is the key. You don't know what you don't know. Over the last 25 years, I've grown wiser from that experience, but part of that wisdom is the understanding that I can't know everything and I need to keep learning. And there are things I'll never know. Like I don't know which direction the stock market will go in the short term as much as others would love for me to know that. Well, sticking to the principles that work is the best I can offer. I'll give you an example. Going back to the great financial crisis in 2008, if you weren't retired at that time, as you might imagine, it was rough for many people because when you get into retirement, you're not looking to go back to work. And the economy was in the worst shape since the Great Depression. Bank deposits were at risk, the stock market and real estate were in the tank. I couldn't tell our clients when the investment markets would get better or which sectors of the market would recover faster. But here's what we could do and we did do that actually worked. When the emotions set in for people, we went back to their financial plans because we had a plan that accounted for the good times and the bad. We reviewed their objectives, their timeframes, and their strategies. If we needed to adjust something, we did. But more importantly, working off of the foundation we set prevented so many families from making the wrong decisions during an emotional time. In retirement, you'll encounter something new. Life changes, the economy changes. Understand that to stay successful, you'll need to keep learning and seeking advice. And finally, number four, your money, your time, your personal emotional tank, all these resources are limited and they can be drained if you're not careful. Here's what I mean and why it matters. I had a client years ago, past tense, things were good, but over time, as much as we talked about the importance of having an investment plan centered on evidence-based research and aligning that with his financial plan, his objectives, his timeframes, as much as I suggested he enjoy life, that he had done the hard part, he was surrounded by people that were negative. There was drama in relationships and an expectation of the next big catastrophe. He couldn't stop watching financial news shows that were focused on far different topics than his well-diversified, research-based investment plan. Well, a bad decision here and then another, then became bigger and more consequential decisions until there was damage to what he had built. He was a good guy, but he didn't surround himself with good people or at least people who would be positive to the values he was trying to uphold and that deep down, I believe he really knew to be right. I can't give you the advice on how to handle the relationships closest in your life, but creating boundaries can be helpful, especially when it comes to family and close friends. Understand who's draining you and who's filling you up. Be aware of what you're taking in, media and commentary from those around you. We all have strengths and weaknesses and having people around where you make each other better, you fill in your gaps, creating a stronger support system for your personal and your financial life can be really important. Surround yourself with good people who share your values and will help you succeed in retirement, even just by their good and positive attitude. Your retirement depends on it. Now, you might be wondering, okay, now I have these big things in place. I can navigate uncertainty, apply principles that have always worked, and I could surround myself with the right people. But how do I create a good quality retirement plan? How do I ensure I don't run out of money? Well, you'll wanna watch this video next where I walk you through a case study, the financial plan of a couple getting ready to retire. You can find a link to that video up here or in the description down below. And if you'd like to talk to me and my team about creating and monitoring your retirement plan to help you maximize your return on life, it's simple to reach out. Just click on the link in the description to arrange a short call. We look forward to talking to you.